And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time SOAP, a web exploitation challenge. Also has a tag XXE. Description, the web project was rushed and no security assessment was done. Can you read the Etsy password file? So let's start the instance. Look at the hint. XML external entity injection or XXE. All right, so let's bring up the web page. Take a look quickly. I always like to view the page source and I also like to bring up the developers tools. So as we look at the page source, make it a little bigger. We've got a bunch of styling we don't care about, a bunch of text, more text. There is a button that we can hit that submits, but it looks to be, and there's a form, yeah, so there's a form and a button that's in each one of these cards that we can see back here. And there's the inclusion of some JavaScript here. The stuff below, uh, it's all common libraries, so it's not gonna be interesting. But these other elements, they're things that we've written ourselves in this application. So those are gonna be interesting to see. So let's start by hitting the button and seeing what it does. We get special info about the university. All right. Let's pull open those JavaScript files and take a look at what they have in them. So we've got a, XML detail check payload and it has a, a method called payload and it seems to be creating an XML document by appending to a string. So let's go ahead, let's set a breakpoint there. And let's also look at check details. First thing we can see is it's looking for the detail forms. So each one of those forms we talked about in the HTML and for each of those it's adding an event listener to the submit event where it runs check details, which you see here and we'll talk about in a second, uh, passing the form data, and it prevents the default submission, which is kind of a common uh, thing you wanna do when you're doing custom code. Uh, you see this pattern a lot. All right, so check details. Uh, the main thing seems to be this fetch fetches a request to the server, and it looks like we're getting the, the payload from this guy's method. So let's set one more breakpoint, and we'll just confirm what we were thinking by debugging. So we've, we've caught at this point, we're gonna run through, and we can see this XML variable now has a document, it has an ID of one, We'll step out of this and we'll set two more breakpoints in the, uh, the handlers down here. So after this hits the server, then it, it goes to one of these two handlers. So we can see we're just, we're taking the response and we are going to put it in the inner HTML of the details area, this area right here where we saw the text coming through. Perfect. So now that we understand it, let's talk about uh, the title and XXEs. So the title SOAP is a play off of SOAP XML, which was a simple object access protocol, which was this terrible, very verbose way that people used to do things in terms of building up server applications. Everyone hated it. It was, it was all this goofy syntax and uh, it was just too heavyweight. It was, it was kind of a useless thing with a lot of XML. So an XSE, XXE, is an interesting attack. All these attacks, by the way, none of this is like elite hackers going in and, and introducing things. These are all features that are present that allow some interesting interaction that's generally desirable, but not in all cases and not in this one. 
So what you see here is uh, the definition. This is portswigger.net. They've got a great set of tutorials on web development and web exploitation type stuff. So you can see here, we do a declaration of an entity. We give it a name. In this case, we're calling it XXE, but we could call it Bob. We could call it anything. We're giving it a name and we're saying where to find it. Find it on the system in the file located at the path Etsy password. And then we can see afterwards, we reference this XXE that we declared. So these names have to match. And that dumps the results of that file. So you can see how that might be useful. You might want to have like a template that you get from the server or something like that. But allowing it to be unchecked just allows anything that the web server can grab to be grabbed by uh, the end user. So that's, uh, that's an extremely bad thing. Now, the way that we're going to develop this is we're going to use the network tab. We will throw away all the network traffic we've had up to this point, and we're gonna remove our debug points because we don't need them anymore. And we're gonna make a request. Oops, I left one, that's okay though. We're gonna make a request and we're gonna go in and we're gonna see the details of that request. So we can see the payload that came across, which is what we expect. And more importantly, we can copy this. I'm gonna copy it as a curl command. Curl is a command line tool that lets you pull up things from the internet. Uh, let's see, copy and paste issue, sorry, one second. Let's first put it up here so that we have it, so we can play with it. All right, so we're gonna make the exact same request to the server as if we were the web page, and just see that that works to start. And it does, we get the special info about Rwanda. Cool. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna incorporate this XXE, which we saw uh, a template of right here. So let's go ahead and let's find something that we can copy and paste. So I want this declaration of uh, a system resource. I'm gonna put it right here. All right. And then we need to refer to it. And there's a very specific way you want to refer to it, which is leading with that ampersand, then the name, and then the semicolon. So now I'm going to run this modified request. And we can see it dumped the contents of Etsy password. And we get the flag. Now, before I lose you, I, I want to just show you, this is not some special name that it has to be. I'm going to call it uh, Bobby Boy. Just, just anything unique and interesting. And you should actually, you should get in the habit of not taking just the default um, proof of concept because sometimes there'll be like web filters or things like that that look explicitly for people just lazily copying and pasting things or trying to get Etsy password. So sometimes you need to be a little more clever about this and it can be good to get in the habit of doing that. So there you can see Bobby Boy is the name I'm using. And all right, had me worried for a second there, but it worked. So let's go ahead, let's submit it, get our points. And if you are watching this and you've watched to this point, you should be liking, commenting, and subscribing because this is great content and you can help encourage me to make more. Thanks so much. Bye.